What is up everyone? I am Bishop Brother and you are watching the MDL semi-final video. Now I know there was a video missing last week for the MDL, but that's because um that game at the during that week every single playoff spot in the MDL had already been decided and literally no one in the entire tour gave a shit. Uh so no one played, including me. Uh, I didn't play either, so we just all took an activity loss. All eight teams took an activity loss. Um and it was fine. <coughs> We were already in playoffs anyway. Uh, after that, we ended up as the second, no, the third team in the league, and we were gonna have to. Uh, let me actually check if that's the case. Uh, just see. I believe we were third. Let's sort of remember. I didn't really bother checking it anymore after. Uh, after. Okay, yeah, we ended up being third, and we were facing the, num the number two team, which was or the Suicidal Snubbles. Uh, which was the only of the only one of the uh, three other playoff teams that we had faced before, because the other teams were the Car Caribbean Corfish, who we memed against, and the Dirty Routines, which would, we wish were supposed to play last week, which we didn't end up doing. So Suicide Snobs were a very inter a very interesting matchup for us, and sadly I must say that the game has already been played. It was played last night. I uh, did what was there to play it, but I didn't record it simply because ghosting and recording at the same time is really, really annoying and it's kind of impossible. So instead, I just I'm gonna do a post recording yet again. I don't like doing them. I like um, live recording better, but I don't. It it was it, it's kind of I overkill. Okay. So basically, uh, Drew and I were both really busy with um, MPL, which is a different tournament that I might make videos about uh, later on. So we didn't build a very, very unique team. We just kind of built pretty standard stuff. So we started off with a Sash Source kit, because basically getting webs... Oh, I, actually, I should do, go over their team first. I mean, I've already, we've already seen the team. It was back in week one, so yeah, I'll go over it real quick. It didn't change at all. It's Staryu, Corfish, Coughing, Tyrant, Apom, Chespin, Stuffle, Kani, Fanpy, Houndour, Lickitung, and why not? Now, basically, what happened last time was um, we they tried to trap our Marini with why not, but failed because of infestation deck and them and All Star completely messing up for some reason. Um, and, and then our Taylor put in so much work towards them. Uh, Marini, Walt, the Corfish, and. Um, our scarf, a scarf phantom that we had brought out, ended up winning the game for us by revenge killing a dragon dancing uh, corvish. That's what happened. So this week we were gonna not, not stray very far away, but one thing that we have over them is that our team changed since last time we played. We now have a Minchino, which makes building for us a lot easier, um, because last time they had one switch into Talos facade, which was the tyrant, an FLI tyrant. Um, now that is still their only switch into that Talo, but it's also their only switch into Minchino. So for us, it's really, really easy to just bring both and say eventually that once the Tyrant is dead, we win with these two. That was the basic idea. And for that, we did need webs. So that's why we have a Sash Shores kit that they don't have a Taunt user, so Sash is perfectly fine. Uh, they, and they don't actually have anything with uh, multi-hit moves as far as I can tell. They have the Apom, but Apom is pretty bad against our team when we have stuff like... Uh, Meow, uh, um, not Meow, Mankey, uh, not not Mankey. What what am I trying? We have stuff like Magnemite. We have Phantom. We have Marini to wall. Uh, we have Archon. We have Hippo. We have so many things to deal with it. So it was unlike that I bring it. So Sash Kit got up webs, can get up webs super reliably and just kind of uh, win us the game at that point because Talo and Minchino just get a kill every time they come in basically. So there's the Talo. It's a very standard set. Actually, it's not entirely standard because there's the Brave Bird, which was a fun. Uh, I decided, uh, which was a fun tech that we had to do. We went with Defog because uh, there could be a moment where we really, really needed to get rid of rocks, very badly, um, and that's what this could have been for. That would have actually been really, really nice to do in the end in this game. I, I, I actually I should not say that. Um, that would have been that. That's a very interesting attack. Our team is relatively weak to rocks with Sash Kit and Taylo and Minchino taking damage from it, getting worn down quicker, and Marini getting worn down, and Magma certainly getting broken and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff, right? But otherwise, it this thing clicks facade and does damage with it. U-turn is nice momentum. Quick attack is nice priority. Helped us last time against Corfish. Um, 
yeah, that's basically it. See, that's basically it for Taylor. Next, we have a Minchino. Uh, Tail slap plus knockoff hits his entire team. Uh, knockoff hits the what did it hit? It hit the Why Not, I guess. But Tail slap just in general hits his entire team. Wake up slap hits the uh, Tyrant. Tail slap, um, I believe. Yeah, Tail slap KOs coughing after a knockoff. So knockoff into Tail slap KOs coughing. Uh, U-turn is one's momentum once again. Wake up slap to Chaos Tyrant. It's it, uh, it's the pretty standard stuff. Is this, this is the only this is the standard Minchino set from or back from from Oras, but I think it, that wasn't really a standard Minchino set because it's a bad Pokemon in general. But Tail Slap can devastate their entire team if that coughing gets knocked off or weakened or whatever. So this can just be incredibly powerful. And next up, we needed Barini again. We're with the same set as we had last time with the infestation for the Why Not. Uh, to try and once you want it. It's going to be tough to once you on the why not because it's faster than us. We could have invested some speed. But we really needed all the bulk we can get to um, to work with this Pokemon. So instead we are just going to try an infestation why not on the switch again. Uh, and we're probably going to die to it if they are smart. But regardless we, can, <laughs> we don't have much of a choice. This is our only real way of even attempting to... Have uh, to win against that? Why not? It's really a tough matchup for us, in that in that way. So next up, we have a um, a, a fan. Uh, geez, it's hard. I'm having a hard time talking. I haven't uh, recorded a video in a while, so yeah. Uh, we have a Z4 Scourge Phantom. This can also absolutely devastate them because they don't exactly have a good way of dealing with it. Um, with Stario and Corfish is taking a fuck ton from Horn Leech, obviously. Uh, Coughing taking a lot from Psychic. Tyrant doing nothing, Apalm not being able to do anything to us and just taking a fuck ton from plus one Horlinch. Chespin taking a ton from Poison Jab, Stuffel taking a ton from Psychic, Connie obviously just dying to Poison Jab, uh, Fantpy dying to uh, Hornleech, Houndour, sure, but are they really bringing Houndour against a team with a Marini? Um, uh, Licky Tongue, okay, it's kind of a dick too, but I think we can break it. We get so much health back from Hornleeching that thing. So yeah, and then why not? It's not going to try and deal with a uh, Phantom when they think we have Shadow Claw, obviously. So this is a very good Pokemon that can absolutely win us the game if we get it set up in the right scenario. Um, it, it, it can all, uh, yeah, that's basically the idea. It's just set it up at some point and try to win with it. Uh, if we decide that that's the play we have to go for. Really, Talo and Minchino are the ways to win, but this is a nice way to do it. And it also means that their Stario can't click Rapid Spin very easily. So next we have our Magnemite, a, ber a Berry Juice, uh, a sturdy, a sturdy Juice Magnemite. This is very useful because they don't have a way of blocking Volt Switch, so we can Volt Switch all over their team if we want to, which is incredibly power, which is incredibly powerful too, obviously. So that's the team. It's pretty standard, as I said. It's nothing special. I just opened a program that I didn't mean to open, but who cares? Uh, go away, please. Thank you. All right. So that's the team. Uh, I, it, I, it's basically just set webs win with the normal types. That's basically the idea. They were super. They are super weak to normal spam, so we should have a decent matchup. But we are also super weak to water spam. Plus, why not? So it's basically whoever gets uh, their spam to work wins this game. And with that, I'm going to go into the battle, and I will see you guys there. And we're back, and this is what they decided to bring. They went with, as far as we can tell, the same team as they did last time, and in hindsight, after that, they told us after that this is indeed the same team, um, which basically means that our normal spam can easily, relatively easily win this game. So let's click the play button. Uh, Drew took the, for the first two turns because it wasn't there. He leads the Magnemite. Uh, which I must say, in hindsight, I find it kind of uh, questionable because I feel like setting webs was really important here. Um, but Magnemite does get off of an, a completely free Volt Switch on the Star Elite, which is not bad at all. So he just clicks Volt Switch as uh, uh, MBY goes into Chespin, which we go into our Talo on this and just click Facade for the first time. This guy, oh no, no, we U turned on the Tyrant uh, as we just freely go into our Minchino, click Wake Up Slap. Uh, making Tyrant very low. He does get a Brox, which kind of sucks, but knocking out this Tyrant already this early pretty much means that our normal spam is going to win. Now he goes Staryu. Uh, Minchino is sadly 18 speed and not 19, so we get into a really bad situation. He kills our Magnemite with Hydro Pump. I want to explain that play for a bit. Magnemite was a very good Pokemon at the matchup, but it was also the only one that we didn't 100% need. Um, 
Phantom is a win condition. Minchino is a win con. Taylo is a win con. Marini needs to be there for Corfish and Surskit needs to set webs. All of those are actually super important in this game still because that Staryu is an absolute dick to us. So we needed a way of dealing with it and this was what we decided. Maybe not the best, but it was our way of dealing with it because we simply had no other options really. So we go into Phantom, straight up bluffing that we can have an FU light and can lift this Ice Beam. We are well aware that we can't, but it was decided that we need to bluff this um, because otherwise we lose the story right now. So he he switches out the story, which is really good. We set up. We, in hindsight, honestly thinking about it now, if we click Psychic first here, we should have no realized that this what the scuffing was. Uh, I'll play the video, but in hindsight, we probably should have Psychic here because. Uh, he goes into coughing, we set up, we click Psychic, he's Berry Juice. If we click Psychic first, he doesn't get into Berry Juice range. We can then set up on the coughing itself and we can Psychic again and we're fine. Uh, but now he gets the set up all off, he knocks out our Phantom. Which is really not that bad as we just get into our uh, Surge Kit and we get into a really interesting situation. Because we are well aware that he's going to start to spin away our webs immediately because our Spin Walker just died. Um... Yeah, that, that's a little bit awkward, huh? Uh, yeah, so we have to, had to click Giga Drain, even though it was really risky to click Giga Drain on a coughing that, coughing that is also grass type, so it's quad resisted, but we have no choice. Now he goes for the T-Bolt, which we live on one. Uh, I want to make clear that I'm not, I didn't do the calcs, okay? Drew said we'd live on one. First off, I believe him, and even if we didn't, even if we would have died, we do have a Sash, and despite it being broken and then be us recovering HP again, it will activate. So, while it may seem like we had a hidden Focus Sash or something, that was actually what was supposed to happen there. So, it's fine. So, he goes into his Corefish, and basically what we say here is, um, we Giga Drain, we don't want to let the Corefish set up. So, we giga, by Giga Draining here, if he decides to go for Dragon Dance or uh, Sword Dance, we put ourselves out of Aqua Jet range, which is fine because the Dragon and Scorfish cannot threaten us. So if he outspeeds us afterwards, it's fine. And uh, Giga Drain recovers of enough HP for us, I believe, to actually live a, a plus two Aqua Jet. We do have, as Drew said at this point, that we had a six point three percent, that we had a that he needed a max roll to live. He said we had seven HP. Uh, MBY after the battle stated that we had six HP based on percentages he saw. I cannot be 100% sure who was correct. Honestly, I just can't. Drew saw it, but MBY has a good point with the way Pokemon Showdown's percentage worked, that he was at 6. He, the way the rolls on this search could work, I should show that it kills. He kills us. Um, these rolls, how they work is uh, basically, he had a minimum roll of 5, so a 1 in 16 chance of doing 5 da damage, then 14 rolls of doing 6 damage, and then the last one, so a 1 in 16 chance again, to do 7 damage. Because Drew's, because we, if we would have had 7 HP, this would have been fine, because we lift this, and we get a Gigas off from the Corefish, meaning it can't set up on anything anymore. If we don't, we are in trouble. Because then, that Corefish becomes an absolute monster. So anyway, uh, we just, we, our search kit goes down, which really, really sucks. Honestly, because we like we didn't need webs anymore. We just really need damage on the Corefish. So we go Marini. Honestly, we need to make a double here. We should have definitely made a double here. If we make a double into uh, Minchino, that is amazing. Uh, but we Infestation, the why not again. We knew he was going into this. But this was, uh, I mean, it was just stupid to keep the Infestation. Because he just encores us into Infestation. And yeah, this goes on for a while. And they keep mirror coating us. And they, yeah, we're stuck into Infestation. The Why Not Gusto does go very, very low, uh, which is interesting. Anyway, he kills us uh, with Mirror Code, and we bring out our Talo. Now, this turn is big. This turn is really big. I think what our play is here is Defog. We should have Defogged, because by Defogging here, we keep Minchino out of range of uh, Aqua Jet. But there was something I did I forgot. I, I, did, I messed up. I messed up in this turn, really badly. We had Defog, we should have Defogged, or, or we should have U-turned and then Defogged later. We should have definitely tried to get the defog off. Basically what happened was, I had put Corefish at plus 2 to calc a Sword Sensing Corefish against a Marini to see what, what it would do. Because I didn't know at this point 100% certainly that it was the same team. So I was calcing SD Corefish. Um, see what it would do. 
And I, I saw they did nothing to Marini and it was fine. And then later on, during this game, I calced Cor uh, Corfish versus Minchino, see how much damage Aqua Jet did. And I saw, oh shit, that kills at this range. Fuck. We are screwed, we lost because we just killed both our, both our Taylor and our Minchino. I still had plus two Corfish open. Corfish would not have killed Minchino. Because Corfish doesn't kill Minchino, U turn or defog is 100% the play here. Because by defogging, we ensure uh, that Taylo can basically pick up this Corfish kill the next turn. Uh, or, let me see. So if we if we U turn here, we guaranteed win. Because I believe then uh, we kill something with Minchino. And he has to try to sack things. But we can go into Taylo then on more things to sack. Uh, right, but we basically the only way for them to win, I, I need to explain this better. What they had to do to win was bring our Minchino into Aqua Jet range. Because Minchino kills everything, Taylor kills everything at this point. Except for the Corfish. Corfish doesn't die in one hit. Um, so what we had to do, we had to make sure Minchino was out as much as possible without taking too much life of recoil to be brought in range of Aqua Jet. Or rocks recoil. That's Or, or rocks damage. What we could have done here is uh, U-turn on the... Why not? Go into Michino, click Tail Slap. Um, well, anyway, it would have been really awkward. What you should have done, we would have tried to remove rocks with Taylo, click Defog to remove them, and then try to get as many kills with Taylo without letting the Corfish come in for free. Basically, that would have been our play. We didn't do that. And because of that, uh, basically what happens is we let our, keep our Taylo in, which is really, really dumb because Facade cannot kill this Corfish. And he, they dragon ends up. We quick attack, of course, but he just kills us with Aqua Jet, and that's it. Because now Minchino is now in range of a Aqua Jet or a knockoff, I guess. Yeah, they just kill us. That really sucks. So honestly, yeah, that Surge could roll definitely determined the game because he would not have been able to set up on anything. Uh, had he been slightly, had he been weakened by the Giga, Giga Drain. Uh, but I do obviously, and once again, cannot tell you if it was 6 or 7 HP. I, is, I, I don't know. I do not know. I, I want to believe Drew, but MBY has a very good point with how percentages work on show, on showdown. And besides, I also messed up with the Corvish Calc, and we would have played this one differently. And we had Defuck on Taylor, which we should have utilized. Maybe we should have just Defucked on the Why Not. Maybe that would have been the play. But there, there was no way he was going to expect that. So yeah, this kind of sucked. I also want to just calc real quick how much plus one Corfish does with I or actually no that's not that's not worth not worth anything of course. Uh yeah, that just kinda sucks. But with that, we are out of the MDL. I think we did really well. Drew and I we had a very, very hyper offense team, which automatically means um that you are extremely reliant on matchups, and simply put, the matchups we had weren't that great. Like uh we won most of them, don't get me wrong. But we didn't have good, like, uh, we had a few really good matchups. Our matchup against uh, MK was really good. Uh, our matchup against um, the Levy and Kingler, uh, or Levy and Niners when they were still in the league, was really good. Um, and our matchup against Few was pretty good as well. But in general, most, most teams just had a way of actually dealing with, uh, with our webs. And I think that's something I've learned from this uh, tour, but I actually want to... Oh, you guys can see that. Oops. Haha, <laughs> you know, okay. I need to stop doing this. So basically what I want to do now is... I think I'm going to make this video a bit special because we, of course, ended, uh, ended the MDL here. Uh, I'm going to cut away real quick and I'm going to open up my team on the stream or on video and basically go over every Pokemon and evaluate their role on the team. Uh, and what I think of them, I learned a lot this MDL about draft leagues, especially, and I think I can definitely make a bit of a better team next time. Webs is really, really good, as we have shown this league, but it's not quite good enough because it's relatively easy to prepare for, and if you have a good matchup against it, Webs doesn't do much. So, I think maybe it's time to go a different route next season. I had a lot of fun, though. Drew was a great teammate, but for now, I'm going to cut away real quick and go to a team evaluation. So... This is the team. This is what we had at the start, or this is not quite what we had at the start, but this is what we had at the end. Um, 
So let's start at the absolute first round pick, which ended up being... Uh, our first two picks were, of course, Taylor and Sirskit. Uh, because we had decided to go full webs. Well, we wanted to go Abra webs, but Abra was sniped by MK. Um, our idea was that webs was just really, really good right now and pretty tough to prepare for. But in hindsight, it really isn't. If you know webs is coming, it's pretty easy to deal with by just having a bunch of flying types or really good defensive mods. And every team, excuse me, every team had pretty much a um, good end to webs. Regardless, Taylor put in a lot of work. It was brought, brought almost every game, I believe. Uh, being absolutely devastating with both Facade and Boombers being just immensely powerful. Uh, and many teams lacking just switch-ins to normal types, which is pretty interesting and something I'm going to keep in mind for future drafts for sure. Uh, Surge Kit was, of course, also brought to most games because we were a webs team and we had to set the webs. Uh, I don't think picking Surge Kit as the web setter was the right way to go, but we ended up doing that regardless. Uh, we were the first team to get a web setter, so we had Sawato and Spinarak open as well. And honestly, in hindsight, it probably would have been smarter to go with Sawato or Spinarak. Because they are cheaper and would have left us with more money to get better abusers than uh, Taylor, Mankey, Drober. Which, they are by no means bad, don't get me wrong. They are good abusers, but they, we probably could have done better, honestly. So next up, we drafted Munchlax and Drillbur. Uh, Munchlax is awesome. I'm really glad we got that. Uh... I, I don't know, it, that was Drew's idea completely to go with uh, Munchlax, uh, and I liked it. We, it. It was very bulky, put a lot of work in many matchups, even brought special lags week one. Uh, I, it, it's great, it's just it's a blanket check to like every special attacker in the metagame, which is awesome. I enjoyed using this Pokemon, and I'm glad that we got it. Uh, it didn't. We didn't quite bring the webs belly drum Munchlax that I was originally thinking of when drafting this. But it still did a lot of work against a lot of teams, and it's really good. Uh, Drillbur didn't do all that much. It it was a good pick, I really think so. Um, but we didn't focus on abusing its strengths enough, in my opinion. What we should have been more focused on is just getting that SD Z move Drillbur out there, which is just immensely powerful, can break through most teams relatively easily, especially with webs up. But we didn't. We kind of utilized it very badly, in my opinion. We always were, we were almost always life for when we brought this. Never really used Scarf. Uh, I think we had a poor. We utilized Drillbur very poorly, in my opinion. It was a good spinner, and it set rocks, and it did some things like it lift a plus four Krogunk vacuum wave against Groot. Um, and killed it, which was cool, and it, it was not useless, but I think we just didn't utilize it well enough uh, to truly show its potential in draft leagues, because I really, really think it has a lot of potential. But we didn't quite have the team support for it, and we couldn't really do what we wanted to do. So next we have Hotmonkey and Phantom. Uh, I want to talk Phantom first, because obviously we chose that as a spin blocker, and Z-Force Curse Phantom was something we were seri really considering as, one of, as an amazing sweeper. Uh, on webs, similarly to Pumpkin was small, but we just I, this thing never worked. We have we try to use this almost every week, and almost every week it just died, doing nothing. It is it was so 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 sad to see this Pokemon just not work. And honestly, we sh this should have just been a frillish. It really should have just been a frillish. That is so much more consistent that spin blocking would have put us in, in less trouble against water spawn ball, kind of. Um, it's bulkier, would have been uh, the scarf water spout, would have been just better. Honestly, I think frillish would have been a better pick. But we went phantom, and I'm not sure why. Probably because we just wanted the mini pump crew, but frillish is better. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, not a fan of this poke. I just didn't do enough. And uh, it's learn learning, I guess, is part of uh, draft league. But yeah, I don't know. This wasn't a good pick. It didn't didn't do it do what we needed it to do at all, really. Uh, Mankey, on the other hand, was solid. Cl uh, fi uh, power fighting types are obviously really really good in Little Cup because there just are not a lot of good fighting checks. And with us us having uh, Marini, that's already one of them gone. Hippo also is a pretty good fighting check, also gone. So. Mankey really had the op the way to do a way to do whatever the fuck it wanted, and it did. It did put in a lot of work, especially against uh, Phil, which the game that Drew played. He just 
th that Pokemon, this Pokemon was great. Uh, it showed up a lot. It had a lot of good coverage. Lack of Dark type coverage really, or lack of knockoff, I should say, does have Night Slash. Uh, really sucks because it means Ghost types really easily switch into it. But regardless, it's a solid Pokemon that I truly believe uh, has a lot of potential in draft leagues. It's because it's quite cheap. So you can get it uh, really easily. And I, I liked it a lot. I liked using it. Having a defined user on the team also meant that defogging was a lot harder. Though that didn't actually come through at all. So whatever. And next we drafted Sand with Hippo and Arkin. Well, this was obviously not the original plan. The plan was to go with Hill with Amara and Alolan Sandshrew. But Alolan Sandshrew got sniped from us by Jocks. And that was just really, really sad. Because getting Hill on this team would have been amazing. But pretty much as soon as Hill went, we drafted Sand. We drafted Hippo for Drillburst, Sand Rush. And we drafted Arkin to benefit from the Sand as well. Uh, we thought we'd be using this more often than we did. We did not. Uh, I, maybe we should have just gone with this in the last game too. Because it kind of... I don't know. I struggled with bringing this because Drillbird just dies to Corvus Aquajet every time. And we didn't really have a good way of actually dealing with that. I don't know. I, that, that last matchup just kind of sucked. Honestly, the matchup against MUI was just really bad for us. Because, yeah. Well, I mean, normal spam was really good against them. Which we didn't have the first time. But second time we did. Uh, but whatever, that game happened now. Hippo, it was a very good bulky Pokemon regardless. It walled a lot of threats. We utilized this very effectively. Drew showed what it can do in that game against Feel, where it took a Sub-Zero Slammer into play rough from Snubble and just healed right back up and completely didn't care. Honestly, this is a really good Pokemon and I'm really happy we had this because dealing with this is annoying as all, as all, as all hell and... By us having it, we didn't have to deal with it, basically. Arkhan was also similar to Phantom, an awkward pick. Probably should not have been an Arkhan. But regardless, we really felt like we needed a good bird check. And Arkhan is a very good bird check. Um, I don't know. Arkhan just, again, didn't do much. Uh, yeah. Arkhan just didn't do anything, basically. That's, that's all I can say. Uh, it, it guess it fired off, it, it walled MK's team, it also walled me out, and it won us the game against MK, so I can't discredit it completely, but it was, it, it wasn't as useful as I'd hoped. We didn't utilize it as a web abuser with that fucking bandit head smash or something that we were thinking of, uh, but it was still effective enough, I guess. Magnemite, uh, was a very good Pokemon, having that good pivot is amazing, I liked having this on the team, great call by Drew to pick this up. We, at, at this point in the draft, of course, we're pretty much looking at, like, uh, okay, we have a bunch of points left over. What are we getting? We got Magnemite and Marini. Uh, Magnemite, yeah, as I said, great pivot. Volt Switch Absorbers are rare uh, in Little Cup. And man, not many teams had it. We probably should have utilized this more, basically, because it's just so goddamn good. So we didn't use Scarf at all. We used it, like, twice, I believe. We used Barriages, uh, like, twice. Um... Yeah, I don't really know. This Pokemon was a good pick, wasn't utilized very effectively. Let's keep it at that. I think we could have definitely done a lot more of this than we did. Marini is an excellent bulky Pokemon. Thank God we had this at the end. Without this to carry it to be a defensive backbone for this ridiculous hyper offense team, it would have been run over by everything. Like, everything. It would have actually been disgusting how bad our, our, all our matchups would have been. I'm so glad we ended up getting this. This is probably the best pick in the entire draft, in hindsight. Honestly, this was the best pick in the entire draft. Because it pretty much turned our extreme hyper offense team from just to just balance. Because we had everything we needed to form a defensive backbone. With Munchak's Hippo and Marini, we could easily wall most of the metagame, which was just great. Really good. It did get trapped by Why Not, of course, but regardless. Very effective Pokemon. Glad we got this. Used it a lot. Nice, nice pick. Honestly. Zubat was brought once in a meme team. Not gonna talk about it. Bad Pokemon. Drafted it for fun. That's it. Minchino. Oh, oh, I should talk about Wubat first, which wasn't brought at all. It's a meme. Drafted for fun. Again, useless. But we draft, we traded Wubat away from Minchino. And that was great. Minchino was really effective. Tail Slap is awesome to have around. 
making that trade pretty much meant that we were that much more threatening because normal spam is so hard to deal with. One normal type is already hard to deal with, but two is just devastating for so many teams. This was an amazing, amazing Pokemon for what it for its 20 points that it was worth. I am going to advoc advocate this thing to hire because it can devastate some teams, can run over them, not care about them at all. It would have run over that uh, MBY's team if we had played it smartly. We didn't, we were dumb, but it would have been so, so, it could have been so good. Could have been, it had potential to be so goddamn good. But we failed. Basically, that's, that's, that's what happened. Anyway, though. Uh, that is the MDL Season 4 on my channel. I'm not going to upload the finals between MBY and the winner of Jocks and Slap. Um, because it's not me. So I, I really, uh, I'm going to watch the finals. I'm really looking forward to seeing that, uh, that fight happen. It's going to be a really, really hype one. Um, and yeah, I am thinking about doing MPL videos. I am not 100% sure yet. And you, if it if one shows up, it'll probably be very soon, the first one. Because the first week has finished at least. Uh, yeah, the first week has entirely finished now. So it will show up very soon. I cannot guarantee exactly when because it depends on how busy I am and um, how exactly I, de I decide to do it. But we'll see. Anyway, that's been it for me. Thank you all for watching the MDL Season 4 on my channel. I greatly appreciate the support. As for my other videos, Road to 802 is coming back as soon as I'm less busy. It's as simple as that. I'm just really, really busy. In the meantime, I'm going to pick up streaming again on uh, twitch.tv slash randomchamps. Um, where I have been streaming the Mario & Luigi series semi-blind playthrough. I have taken a break recently because I just got really, really busy with a bunch of stuff. Uh, so, whatever. Anyway, that's been it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.